Life's Lifestyle, and I'm here with... Satir from Satir. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Enjoying the tour? You know, um, this festival run for us is quite compact. It's about really uh, celebrating the re-release of Nemesis Divina. And um, it wasn't so much about quantity for us, it was about finding a sensible combination where you play some small, what should we say, more underground oriented festivals uh, to celebrate a little bit about you know what this is all about. It's a milestone in the niche genre of black metal. Well, you mentioned uh, the re-release uh, re uh, Nemesis Divina 20. Uh, uh, why did you decide to particular uh, to this celebration album? This album? Uh, perhaps it's some of the same stuff that was the reason for us starting to tour with that record because um, I don't know if everyone knows that really, but you know, we never played live until the third album, which is highly unusual. And that was because what we wanted to do was to make records and have our records released, uh, which at the time uh, uh, was harder than it is today. When we started touring with the third album, Nemesis, that was because there was you know public demand. Like, come on, you have to do this because the first two records made uh, considerable impact, and then came this album, which had huge impact. So we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll tour. Having done this band for a long time, throughout the years, there's been, you know, requests to do anniversary this and celebration that, and we've always been, ah, no, 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 we don't do stuff like that. If I was gonna do something like that, then it would have to be that album, uh, because. Every album we've done has changed a lot of things for Satyricon. But this one didn't only change a lot for Satyricon, but changed a lot for Black Metal. The plan was to remaster the, the record and then sort of refurbish the artwork and then maybe look into remixing the album. But we found out that anyway, it wasn't possible because the tapes were. Um, I guess, what do you call it, demagnetized. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to get an idea of like, what is different now, is that um, all the things about the artwork that were dated, that were you know meant for 1996, they're gone. Um, all the qualities it had, uh, which makes it, are still there. But the stuff that was, as I said, dated and not timeless has been removed and replaced with timeless things which to me makes it look even more iconic, yeah. Like a milestone album like Nemesis should look, you know, yeah. it should look iconic. Warmth is really, for me, the most significant thing. And if you listen to the beginning of the opening track, The Dawn of a New Age, uh, if you listen to the guitar intro drum stabs going into the fourth song, Do Some Hot Good, that to me really shows what the difference is. It's more of this analog yeah. feel to it. If you think back at the time that you made the record, uh, can you still remember how that was for you, putting out your third record, mainly uh, it's, it's a very important step in the career of the band. Do you know how it was for you at the time? When you write history, uh, it's rare that you you know, know that you're doing it. but. Um, we have done things in our career which have felt like now we're a part of something extraordinary and I guess if anything that was the feeling that Nemesis was a you know a little bit the same thing. Frost and I were extremely ambitious, you know, we were starting to sort of moving on from fumbling around with our instruments to actually becoming quite good at it. I was starting to mature as a songwriter. We're getting bigger, better budgets so that we could realize more of the things that we perhaps wanted to do earlier but couldn't afford, you know, that's just the thing of the underground. We had Nocturnal Culto from 
Dark Throne, which was, you know, considered more or less of a, you know, half god at the time in the scene, joining the band, and not only joining the band, but actually moving from the very north of the country down uh, to the east, where we were located, to be a part of our thing. People say, okay, that's a real iconic album. Uh, do you have any idea specifically yeah, why they see it like that? Anything iconic is a combination of quality and timing, I think. Who knows, in black metal, maybe Maybe there's been, you know, another Euronymous, another Fenris, another Ishan, another Abath, another Satyr. After 95, after the 91 to 95 thing. But the thing is that those people that I mentioned now, we were there at the same time. And something happens then, you know, that's why these you know, bands like May and Dark from Gersham, Emperor, Satyricon, Immortal still are sort of the biggest names today. Uh, and that time was a time where, you know, you, you thought you were working on something fantastic and then you would talk to your colleagues and you were listening to some of the demos they were doing and you were like, fuck, you know, someone just raised the bar. So I think, I'm sure there's been, you know, very talented people in Norway after that, but maybe, you know, there's been like one or two and there should have been six or seven to help each other and push each other and to create some sort of wave. We worked hard. We always have. We still do. Are you happy that you're still around Yeah, I do this uh, because I like doing it. I mean, um, with all my stuff in, in that I picked up on working with uh, on the side in wine in the last uh, six years or whatever it is, that stuff is going so well that from making a living point of view, what would be the wise thing to do is to just not do satiricon and focus more on the wine stuff because that can there's a lot more money to uh, begin that but and life is not about money i've always had such belief in satiricon that you know when we were building this band like let's say when we were going out with pantera 16 years ago they were out doing a European tour for reinventing the steel and that tour became actually the last tour of Europe that the band ever did and we supported them on that tour and the record company would not like put the money on the table that was needed to do the tour so I sold my car and things like that see I wasn't thinking so much like Oh yeah, then uh, we can be in that magazine or in like that radio. Or I did that. I, I never thought like that. I, I thought this is the kind of experience we need to step up our game. Like I do this uh, because I devote my entire life to metal music. I do this because I have to do it for me. Um, and I'm a kind of a guy that even though if my goals are extremely ambitious and I want to, you know, I want everything I do to be uh, utterly significant. I, I know very well that, you know, you cannot write the perfect album, but I like to have that as a goal and I like the process of that. And when I come uh, close, in my opinion, then I start to think about how to get closer the next time. There will be a time that the plug is going out of the band, of course. That time will come in the future. And have you already spotted your successor, maybe? When Satyricon is not around anymore? Well, um, you know, we'll see uh, what happens, but I, I, I sort of see myself doing music 
for a long, long time. Uh, but I'm not sure if it will always be Satyricon. I'll, I'll keep on doing Satyricon as long as it feels good and right to be Satyricon. But um, my motivation is very, very high. I like being here at Graspot and I look very much forward to playing the show. I really, really do. But I look equally much forward to just going to rehearsal uh, at 12 o'clock on Monday working on new songs where absolutely nothing spectacular will happen. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy working on those songs uh, and uh, it's nice to share the energy with the crowd and it feels uh, spectacular and I love the adrenaline rush of that. Uh, but what I love just as much, if not more, is what's going to happen when we come back home uh, where we work on musical solutions, where we have to use you know, 23 years of experience to try and come up with uh, sophisticated uh, solutions for uh, simple things so that they become more powerful and efficient. You know? the day that I don't feel this anymore that I also sort of move into a I always said that moving into a face uh, you know with a, uh, the the last days of, of, of cash where he you know sort of went from doing his more like energetic country stuff to doing the more somber um, American series stuff and mm -hmm. I don't know if I could do anything that good, but I would love to try, you know. Uh, so, and something which is very low key. Yeah. Thank you for watching Headbangers Lifestyle.